Hey everybody, I don't know if you knew this, but Turnitin has rolled out a new feature that integrates directly in with Canvas, and so we're just gonna spend just a couple of minutes to take a look at that right now and how to implement that in creating an assignment. So if you're in your Canvas shell, I'm just going to add an assignment right from the module. New assignment, add the item. Really all the steps are pretty close to the same. To go in, I'm going to put in my description here, and then under submission type, move that to online, file upload. This allows for things like Word documents or PDFs. Now this is the part right here and that is new. Plagiarism review. Instead of none, you change that to turn it in. Immediately you will get some features very similar to the old features, but they're integrated right into the Canvas assignment. From right here, you can click on uh, more information if you need some help. First selection up here at the top is you can change where to store the submissions, either the standard paper repository or do not store the submitted papers. You would select the second one if, for instance, you were having the uh, students submit some sort of draft paper or something that you did not want put into the Turnitin database for a later checking. But usually you're going to have it set on standard paper repository. And then you can select what you would like to compare the submissions against, student repository, website content, periodicals, journals, and publications. I would suggest just leaving that as default. You can also exclude a few things here. You can usually tell what these are when you're looking at the paper itself. So I would probably suggest just leaving those off for now. And then down here at the bottom, you can show originality report to students. You can let them see it immediately, or you can select it so that they can see it after the assignment graded or after the due date or never. I suggest immediately, if you allow for resubmissions, it means that students can see maybe some of the problems that they have uh, created and make those corrections so that they can resubmit it right away. This, is, this makes Turnitin not just some sort of uh, punitive tool that we use with the students, but actually using it as a learning tool with the students, which would be ideal. Once you have those selected, other settings are as normal and you would click Save. You can publish. I'm going to go back to the module now. And in the new Turnitin test, you won't see anything different from, from your standpoint looking at the new Turnitin test. Another great advantage of this integrated tool is that we can now test it with the student view. So if I go over here to Settings, click on Student View, I can now go into this assignment, submit assignment, and choose a sample file that I have previously downloaded that is clearly plagiarized. This is one tricky thing, but what it says down here at the bottom is, I agree to the tools end user license agreement. Now what it's talking about is turn it in, but it doesn't say that, so the student may not know right away that they need to click that, but they should probably figure it out. But in your instructions, you may want to communicate that to the students. But if you try to submit it, it will tell you that you must agree to the submission pledge before you can submit this assignment. Not super clear. Hopefully they will fix that in the coming months. But all you need to do is click on there and then submit assignment and it's done. Again, it looks a little different than the previous Turn it in. For the student to see the submission details, they need to click up here on submission details. And what they will see initially is this tiny little clock right there. If you hover over it, you'll see similarity score pending. And that's all you can see until the Turnitin score has been calculated. So I'm going to pause here and then we'll fast forward to a point when the score is calculated. Okay, our feedback score returned. This probably took two or three minutes, and I would guess, depending on the server load, it would depend on the time, or it would change the time. Um, so now it shows that my similarity score was a failure at 100%. When I click on the similarity score, 
you'll see that I get an error. This is just one downfall of the student view. And this page, instead, the student would see a breakdown of why their paper was shown up as a 100% failure result. Now, if we leave the student view and we go back to the teacher view, if you click on the assignment, then go to speed grader, you will see that here, and you can click wherever that similarity score is listed. You can actually see why it came back as plagiarized. Almost the entire paper in this case was plagiarized. And if I click over here under the right, I can look at the different sources. Almost everything was here, except for the title, which was from a handbook. You can see the number of times that this actual paper was submitted to different institutions. And then you can use different filters to exclude uh, bibliography after the fact, or exclude quotes, or exclude sources altogether. Here you can also download the entire paper. You'll notice if you double click on the source, you can also see where it was originally cited. You can also go into your grades. And from the grades, you will see a little red tab there if it has a high similarity score. And again, you can click on that tab and see the paper itself listed, as well as click on the similarity score percentage. Okay, well, I hope that was helpful, and I hope you can use the new Turnitin plagiarism checker that's integrated into Canvas to help not only check plagiarism, but actually increase the quality of our students' writing.